to cross over. We're talking about Qigong and Wushu, and we were mentioning the hard form of Qigong. What we saw, what, what we saw in the last segment, Alex, you were doing, was, was that considered more of a softer form? Yeah, considered a softer form for health benefit. And often the movements themselves aren't necessarily as we would do in fighting. Some of the movements on the strike would be an inhale on twist. But normally in Taiji we would, or in martial arts, we would strike and we would breathe out. That's right. But these power. forms are, yeah, using internal sort of um, move, um, positioning of the organs in a way. We're twisting with a full breath, it's putting different pressures on different organs so they have interior and what we call Megong or health benefits, internal benefits. Okay. So the, the aims and the goals of this stuff style of Qigong are slightly different, even though they have similar origins. Okay, so we're going to see some of the hard Qigong. Okay, not recommended to try this at home <laughs> <laughs> without the proper practice. Tell me a little bit, I mean, this is the, this is the stuff that people love to see, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. It's the, uh, you know, it, it has the, the dramatic factor. Is, is this stuff that you do, Master Zhang, in some of your, have done in some of your training? I actually, that's what I say, the Qigong. Mm. And Yin Gong, it's just, it's not just for health, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people challenge, uh, it's for uh, improving the function of people's body. I see. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah, of course, I practice, but not exactly like this, because uh, I don't want to hurt myself. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I practice something I can really use. Uh, can I show a little? Sure. Yeah, sure. for example, I will sh practice my finger, because mm. I use my finger, okay. for example. So this is Qigong as well. Exactly. Just a little hard. Wow. Yeah, okay. I, I can't even do a push up with my whole palm. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, we, we've been talking about Qigong, but I think one of the things that many people are probably wondering is, what exactly is this term? What does it mean, Qi? Mm -hmm. You know, what is that? You know, we talked about the circulation of Qi. But what is this? You know, I, I've heard the term life force. Yeah, and that's probably the most accurate thing we have in English to describe what it is. I mean, in Chinese, it's really um, breath or energy. You know, mm -hmm. it has a, depending on the context of use, and really we're thinking about it as a life force. Think about, you know, Chinese medicine and the ideas of the Orient in many ways are much more focused on how the body functions, mm. about energy, about the unseen things. In the West, we're very much focused on the material aspects, the things we can see, the things we can touch. You know, the difference between the living body and the dead body is essentially what we call qi. There's no function left, even though all the cells are intact, you could even have um, the warmth in the cells, you could have the system still moving in many ways. Mm. And this is what the Chinese people are much more interested in, in the subjective life separation from, the, from death, in this sense. Right. Let's take a look at some diagrams that you showed us. Uh, and this is, uh -huh. it illustrates a little bit the difference between Western and Chinese medicine. Can you walk us through this? A little sure. Bit? And how it relates to qi and qigong, which is what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, so today. on the left-hand side, we have what we call um, a vasali. It was produced actually in 1543. And on the right-hand side, we have actually a Japanese print there um, from 1300. But we can say that these are two views of reality. These are a western view on the left hand side of what the body is and how it works. And on the right muscular, hand side, skeletal. Correct. You're looking right. at those things we can touch. You're looking at form. What we call this is a kind of a substance orientated viewpoint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the right hand side you can see they're not too concerned about the, um, the muscle structure as such and the things we can touch. They're much more concerned about a functional orientated viewpoint. Mm. So the theories are quite different. They're the same body. These, I mean, 2,000 years ago, around the birth of Christ, you can say that these viewpoints or these views of reality or the way the human body works were very much well established in the West and the East. Mm. And what we're doing here is we know that, for example, in Western medicine, we have this idea and Western culture in many ways where we break things down into their smaller components to understand the whole. Right. Where in the Chinese sense, it's much more um, about function. It's much more about understanding the whole system and how it works, and it's about communication. This is the meridian. Right. So are those all the different meridian points that it's It is one out. of the meridians that runs through the stomach and the gallbladder channel. So it's actually much more concerned about life and well-being and how the function of the system over how the structure of the system is. Mm. Master John, do you use... 
Chinese medicine, or, you know. I believe that uh, Chinese medicine and Western medicine, they are good at something. Um, Chinese medicine, they are good at this kind of disease, but mm. Western is good at that. Mm. So they are, they are different, but they are both useful. Well, when we come back, we're going to hear more about how we can cultivate our own chi. All right, well, stay tuned. Thank <laughs> you.